the blitz has begun, and so has the fact-checking. Our own Barbara Walters spent several hours with Palin on Friday, and she tells me the former governor was extremely outspoken and addressed her critics, and there are plenty of those. This week's Newsweek cover, evidence that Sarah Palin may not always get the kind of coverage she wants. Even conservatives are on the attack. Yeah, she's a joke. I mean, I just can't take her seriously. <laughs> the idea that this potential talk show host is considered seriously for the Republican nomination, believe me, it'll never happen. She certainly has people talking. In her new book, she describes aides not listening to her, even yelling at her. Towards the end of the campaign, the press reports quoted unnamed McCann aides calling you a diva, you know this, a whack job, a narcissist. Why do you think these people were trying to destroy your reputation? For some people, this is a business. And if failure in this business was going to reflect poorly on them, they had to kind of pack their own parachutes and protect themselves and their reputation so they wouldn't be blamed. I'll take the blame, though, because I know at the end of the day what the truth is. But already, some of those former staffers are fighting back. One former aide sent emails to ABC News to prove that some stories in the book don't match the facts. For example, remember that prank radio gag where Palin thought she was talking to French President Nicolas Sarkozy? Yes, hello, Mrs. Governor. Hello, this is Sarah. How are you? Fun and you. This is Nicolas Sarkozy speaking. In her book, Palin says top aide Steve Schmidt yelled at her over the phone. The force of his screaming blew my hair back. How can anyone be so stupid? But staffers say there was no yelling, just an email saying, who set this up? Are you kidding me? And then there's Saturday Night Live. In her book, Palin says she wanted to appear on the show. Let's go on and neutralize some of this and have some fun. But in an email, Palin writes... These folks are whack. What's the upside in giving them or any celebrity venue a ratings boost? Fact checks aside, Sarah Palin is the most visible, most provocative Republican the party has right now. Even Hillary Clinton seems intrigued. In the book, Palin mentions having a cup of coffee with the secretary someday. Well, you know, I've never met her. Um, and uh, look, I'd, I'd look forward to uh, sit down and talk with her. And what about Senator John McCain? There was a conference call we've learned on Friday between McCain and many of his top former aides. On that call, McCain essentially told them that he would prefer that they stay out of the Palin book coverage and not engage her. He apologized that they were going through this and told them he understood if they needed to refute factual errors or protect their own reputations. But he also said something, Diane, like, this will pass and it will pass faster if you all just keep quiet. He, by the way, does have a copy of the book signed by Palin, but I'm but told he hasn't spoken to her in months. Oh, really? And as far as we know, has not read the book. Don't know. Yeah, no. don't know. Okay, well, all of this seems ripe for a comment from our political observer, ABC's Cokie Roberts. Cokie, come in this morning. Governor Palin, as you know, firing from both barrels at her own former camp. They're firing back. Ever seen anything like this before? No, uh, this is quite remarkable, and she will be out, you know, in her bus, which is covered with her picture, the cover of the book, out around the country, expecting to draw huge crowds, and she'll have the she'll have the loudest voice on this for sure. We have a brand new ABC News Washington Post poll out this morning, which shows that 60 percent of all Americans say they do not feel she is qualified to be president. Do not feel it. But it seems her book strategy is gaining some ground among Republicans because our poll shows her numbers are up. 61% of Republicans do think she's qualified. Go out on a limb here. You think she's running for 2012? I think she's finding out if she's running for 2012. I think that she'll see how this goes. She'll see uh, how a bruise she gets, uh, whether people take her seriously, uh, whether, you know, she is the joke that you just heard David Brooks uh, saying of her or whether she's the new Ronald Reagan, which Newt Gingrich says she might be. That's right. What about a Hillary Clinton, Sarah <laughs> Palin, what, coffee summit, I think they're calling it, instead of the beer summit this morning? Think it'll ever happen? Wouldn't you and I like to be there with them? It oh, would be fun. Oh, please invite us. <laughs> right. Well, I think it might happen someday, but it's not likely to happen while Sarah Palin's running as a Republican and, and Hillary Clinton is in the Obama administration. But they could share some true stories about the sexism during the last campaign aimed at both of them. Well, I want to ask you about something, going back to this Newsweek cover, and Kate showed it in her piece, because the cover picture was a picture that Governor Palin did for Runner's World. 
world. <laughs> and as we know, a lot of the guys have done running shorts pictures for running magazines. Was it fair of Newsweek to put that on their cover? And we wouldn't, we haven't seen those guys in shorts on, on Newsweek's cover, have we? Look, she posed for that picture, so it's fair game. But it is, um, it is a way of saying, don't take this person seriously. She's just a chicken shorts. All right. Well, thanks to you, Coke. <laughs>